This college football picks week 10 edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by mybookie.ag. My bookie is doing everything they can to help out DGEN's only cash big, including a 50% deposit match on your first deposit. That's mybookie.ag, promo code SGP to get a 50% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the App Store and use promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to fifty dollars. That's ThriveFantasy.com promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Ace per Head. Ace is the leader in pay pred providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at AcePerHead.com slash SGP. That's AcePerHead.com slash SGP. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean. Second, the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer dog? Congrats on the uh, all rise cover of the New York Giants. Five and two on the season against the spread, Sean. Thank that's all much. that matters. Ah, uh, what do you want to do? You want to talk about this some more? <laughs> well, I, I assume you're just blaming it all on the refs. No, I, I, I'm not. There's no reason. So the second you start leaning into blaming the refs, you sound yes. like a crazy person. So I'm gonna crack open this ice cold. Not LaCroix, but uh Kirkland sparkling water. Shout out to Kirkland. If I don't know if they do sponsorships, big fan of Costco. Sean, why don't you bring your guest though? I don't want to be rude to the Joining guests. us, third man in the booth, in studio. Uh, after his remote work in Oklahoma, <laughs> yep. Colby Dant, aka the Dant base, aka Pick Dundee. Colby, how's it hanging? Well, look, if you if you're blaming the refs, uh, you sound like an asshole. No, you don't. Because if you listen to that NBA, I hate to blast another pot on this, but if you listen to that NBA one. Dude, for thirty years, I mean, I've been, I've been claiming this <laughs> shit, and I'm. It's great. It feels great. It feels great. Col- Colby's the guy. Colby's Mel Gibson. I'm the conspiracy. Demogra- I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on. <laughs> yeah, the uh, whistleblower podcast is what uh, Colby's referring to. It's about Tim Donaghy, kind of a, kind of a deep dive on uh, NBA and just refing and kind of all the shenanigans that the uh, National Basketball Sean, Association the, the gets WWF, involved in. The WWF. But, but the yeah. tie a bow on the Giants situation. A, yes, they covered the spread. B, yes, I hit some props. You're welcome. Uh, C, uh, I, I did. I told you Evan Ingram, I, he might have a game. A little retribution. Still lost the game, so they didn't fuck up the draft pick. But I will have something prepared for the NFL pick. Oh, something special. Um, haven't figured out if it's going to be positive or negative yet, but there will be something <laughs> special. Uh, there will be a, a, a costume with it, perhaps. Is it your avocado costume that you wore for Halloween? Uh, you're not that far true? off. Is that true? Oh, wow. Is that not true? far off. <laughs> yes, Colby uh, Ryan dresses an avocado. He was the pit side, so. Hopefully he posts that to our Instagram over the Sean, you're going to have guess. You'll have to. Why did you'll you have to procure that picture? You I'm could, not participating. You could have done coleslaw. Uh, I I've done coleslaw before. That really? was Pullman. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah oh, that was okay. my coleslaw. Oh, that would be an yeah. awesome costume. Yeah. <laughs> All right, be real sloppy. Enough messing around. Let's talk Get college sauce everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> college football. We did not. We broke our streak of the triple lock salute. Although uh, Ryan did Wait. cash his lock. Iowa State minus twenty eight. We did uh, have a triple lock salute on our bonus locks. Uh, Kramer you know hitting West Virginia, me hitting Alabama, and Colby hitting uh, San Jose. You know State. why we did well in the bonus locks? Because we can pick off the card. <laughs> well, I, uh, what I want to know though is the dog that I had, East Carolina. <laughs> The AAC and uh, gave an op- official apology yep. that they should have won the game. Yep. So I feel like can we can we give me a little bonus there? Uh, they're not. Re- I don't. I don't see any sports books uh, refunding this. <laughs> that was one, an so. eighteen point dog I gave out, man. Oh, well, we you could have given out Michigan State. <laughs> and we <laughs> next time I'm, you'll do. I'm better. really kicking myself because that was one of the games I actually bet bigger, and I don't know why. I, you know, I got sucked into the uh, the patriotism angle on Air Force plus fourteen and a half, which looked great early. But why I should have won Michigan State? Return. That was so easy. Dude. Yeah, the kick return was a backbreaker. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Penn State ended up pushing plus thirteen. That was that was kind of a fortunate break for us there. Kind of a lame weekend. Uh, pretty lame outside Mi- that of me Minnesota. My locks Minnesota San Diego State being a world beater. <laughs> San, uh, San Diego State. Our why, gals, baby. Why is no one making them a lock? They were just fucking <laughs> destroyed. Utah. If they're State. gonna play offense like this, which by the way, as I was doing my prep work this week, and we'll get to San Diego State later, I, I completely forgot who their coach was. What? And I had a moment where I was like, "Oh my god!" Well, well, I feel like I just had unprotected sex with a whore. 
dude, dude. Whoa, this is danger. I think it's that actually a, a great disgusting act thing because like when San Diego State first he was this is his second stint at San Diego State. And and he retained Rocky Long's defensive yeah, players. Yeah, no, I know. And he brought defensive in some coaches, offensive coaches. I mean, wiggle. exactly. And their offense is way more aggressive than they were under Long. Sean, Sean's still confused at who we're talking about. So tell <laughs> him who who the head coach is. Uh, it's Brady Hoke, the guy who yeah. famously didn't wear a headset, Sean. Which yes, may, maybe I know him well. Maybe it's good it's to bad keep luck. him in his own <laughs> silo over there. Well, we saw Bruce Arians. We went with the double glasses, the face visor, <laughs> and the like headset. He looked like he was fighting zombies or something. What the fuck? <laughs> we we tweeted out a photo of of that over at Gambling Podcast uh, and said, "Did the uh, like what job does this guy have?" Wrong answers only. <laughs> Got some great answers from uh, the listeners. The one of my favorite was Grateful Dead Roadie. Well, uh, by the way, did you see who threw that at us? Sportsbook you- director over at the South Point. Oh yeah, Bruce South Andrews. Point. Great book. Uh, yeah, coming hard with the the Grateful Dead <laughs> angle, which was a nice one. I was, as, I was, a, as a Dead fan, that that particularly tickled he, me. He definitely had the look of someone who maybe he like won the Darth <laughs> Vader like control box in a Star Wars auction, and he's just like, "Fuck it, I want to show everyone what I want." Someone had another good one. <laughs> Have about, you seen the Mandalorian? That shit's dope. Uh, yeah. About a guy looking for treasure on the beach with a metal detector. That was pretty good. <laughs> that is cool. Another one was a uh, art thief, and then I responded back saying. Like oh that's clearly the safe cracker like it just (laughs) yeah definitely I'm in what I want to know is that why why does it need to be there yeah what's the benefit of having it so close to your head yeah and I mean does he control the volume with his teeth the guy's a literal millionaire can we not figure out the double glasses thing again I know he's got an eye thing but like eh, get get yourself a nice pair of glasses do you have an inside you know play to this he's a hardcore fucking hillbilly who chews on paint Sean we're about to get a three star review um ten minutes into the college football podcast they were still talking about the NFL. Well, if you want to bet on the National Football League, plenty of opportunities over at mybookie.ag. But more importantly, college football, that's what we're betting on. That's what we're talking about. Colby Dant picks every college football game against the spread. You can get those picks usually post Thursday afternoon over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. And all those lines he, of course, uses are from mybookie.ag, as are the lines we're going to be using here for the College Football Picks podcast. And if you use that promo code SGP, 50% deposit bonus, mybookie.ag. They take care of you over there. And they have a motto you play, you win, and then you get paid. Mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. Let's do it. Let's crack open a beer for the Colby Six Pack. We will be joined by a special guest, Dan O'Carter, to break down the Clemson Notre Dame game later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. Although it's a podcast, you always. Always, what are you gonna do? Change the channel on a podcast? You can't do it. <laughs> Who Eastern- are those people that don't listen to the end of the podcast? What, what, what are they doing? Savage that's, are they? That's where the lock dog and tees and bonus lock and COVID games are given out. Kent State minus six at home in Kent, Ohio. We're talking Maction, baby. Eastern Michigan coming to Kent, Ohio, Wednesday, three o'clock West Coast time. Wife's gonna be happy that this uh, this has worked its way into the routine. Eastern Michigan plus one eighty five dog getting six points in Kent, Ohio. Colby, give us uh, give us the take here. First off, uh, it's so great to have Maxion in Pac twelve yeah. this week, and especially Maxion six games that look normally they will give you like one game on Tuesday, one game on Wednesday, and the rest on Saturday. Now this year they're all in Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Well, or this is six game slate this Wednesday. Six wow. games, really? Yeah. Be different. Oh my God. And there'll be a college experience. All and I'll cover all of those uh, Maxion games. A special, maybe, yeah. maybe special a, special, special, a, a Maxion Maxion preview. Special, yes. a, Should, a special Maxion episode every week. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it'll be out early Tuesday. Wow, morning. is this gonna? What are the networks gonna do? We have Eastern Michigan and Western Michigan playing at the same time. <laughs> Isn't this gonna kill ratings? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, in it's Kalamazoo, a, it's a real Michigan divide. Look, I'll give you a pass for throwing the action. I appreciate you throwing the action on it, but how is it on this great week? One of the few weeks we will get to fade UMass. You don't put UMass on the sheet, <laughs> dude. That number is so fucking high, dude. I already got it. I already got forty-five and a half in my pocket. I, and ask Sean because I sent him a message and I said you might want to grab forty-five and a half. Before it or 44 and a half before it gets up well, to 45. I mean, Marshall is money, right, so I expect anyways, him to cover that, but can't believe you, you're doing this to the uh, audience, the clients. All right, back to the game. We have to talk about 
Uh, yeah, right now this is just an angle where you're taking the team with the returning, uh, the, but more returning players. You're taking the team with the quarterback that I think you trust more. Sure, you lay the points, five and zero oh in their last five against the spread. Let's go with Kent State. I'm riding Eastern Michigan, oh, man. Boy. I trust wh- one of my favorite coaches uh, that should get a, a, a big time gig is Chris Creighton. I think getting a month to prepare now. Normally they'll they'll like in the middle of the season hit a little rough patch because I don't think they have the depth. It's a really hard s- school to recruit at, one of the hardest in all of college football. But getting a month of prep for Kent State, okay. give me Chris Creighton to uh, to cover that. I liked it obviously better at seven, but six. You're gonna six fade works. my golden flashes. Yeah, the Eagles will got this man. Which one are the Eagles? Eastern Michigan, yeah, of course. Yeah. Odd Shark has it uh twenty five point eight for Kent State, twenty four point two for Eastern Michigan. I like all the extra Based time to what? The, a highly sophisticated computer <laughs> algorithm that is more dominant than Colby. I Eastern Michigan, zero and five against the spread in their last five games against Kent State. You know what that means? That means they're due. I just all the public is all over Kent State. I'm, oh, I can't. That's a good angle. I can't take uh, Kent State <laughs> as a huge public favorite here at home. Yeah, here's the problem, though. I think the public's been okay in some of these early uh, season conference games. When uh, you know who the fuck knows what's going to happen. That's the that, you know the biggest thing I was sad about was like Colby hasn't learned his lesson. Got to <laughs> give these give these a couple weeks to breathe before we start leaning in. I just trust Creighton, man. You got to go with the coaches that you okay. trust. Yeah. Let's do it. Moving over to Eastern Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina, where uh, Colby's East Carolina Pirates, five point home dog, <coughs> Tulane. I think it opened at two and a half. It's already up to minus five. Colby, I'm assuming you're going to, you're going to go chalk here and take your ECU Pirates, three yeah. and two against the spread this year, only one and four straight up. Against the Green Wave, uh, we're a lot better than a record indicates. the The Navy game we <laughs> lost by two, and and our quarterback couldn't play. He's our best player on our team because of contact tracing. Yeah. And then uh, last week, obviously, the AAC it, it initialed uh, or g- gave us a fucking apology, saying we blew three calls on yep. the final final drive of the game. Uh, so so I, I'm all over ECU here, man. I think uh, you know Tulane's got a freshman quarterback. He's good. He's pretty decent for a freshman, but uh, I still. Can Something, I give you a trend yeah. to what got me com- running off of Tulane? Zero and five against the spread, coming off a win <laughs> in their last five. Give me these Carolina Pirates. Uh, which, by the way, if you are a, a, a kid going to college on the East Coast, East Carolina, the bar is low enough. If you know what I mean. So what for you to make a forty-seven no, yarder? No offense, I can but, definitely yeah. make a forty-seven <laughs> yarder. A lot of people can make a forty-seven <laughs> yarder on the campus of ECU. If you, if you know what I mean. And the, a step up from Chip Radford. Shots only. A step up from Radford. Don't Buddy, get me wrong. Look, but. you're coming at me. I'm a man. I'm 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 almost he forty. Almost said, he almost said alma mater, but that implies East, you graduate. East Carolina. Carolina is somewhere between James Madison on, Col- and Radford. Colby has 12 level. credits from there. Yeah. All right. Don't go yeah. disparaging East Carolina. <laughs> Give me University. the ECU pirates as <laughs> <What>? the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going against you guys. I'm going too lane to me. I, I realized this in the NFL and in college football. I mean, we saw mm. it with the Kansas game. We're going to see it in UMass versus Marshall. Bad shit happens to bad teams. It just does. Yeah. The yeah, ECU you're killing me here. The pirates, they lost. They got screwed by the refs. That kind of shit just happens. I think the fact that they were 18 point dogs, they should have won. They got an apology from the refs. I think mentally you're just like, you know what? We're cursed. We're fucked. And two you- lanes going to come in there and they don't have that kind of negative energy and they're going to, they're going to win and cover. I'm Are you sorry, playing the participation award uh, <laughs> letdown angle? I think I'm playing the dream crusher angle. I, okay. I think Eastern Carolina, they wanted to do it for the Danta base. They were his money long dog. They disappointed uh, the Danta base. And again, I don't know what you call someone who went to the school but didn't graduate. But whatever, close to alumni, yeah, a pirate. You know what I mean? <laughs> Colby went. It says he, he went. To, he went on vacation yeah. there once. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> it's, uh, hung out there. Two and a half years later. <laughs> yeah. Best vacation you ever D- had. Definitely stayed an extra year without per, you know doing any any That's real cool. classwork. <laughs> you know. What I mean? That's because the bar. Hey, never mind. <laughs> Nebraska Big Ten action and Evanston Illinois Northwestern laying three and a half minus one seventy five Nebraska plus one fifty. They were supposed to play uh, Wisconsin, then the COVID hit, as it's been known to do. A Northwestern, who I I faded early on, uh, they beat the shit out of Maryland. They're now two and zero, oh, one zero oh and one against the spread. Cornhuskers zero oh and one, zero oh and one against the spread. Colby, what Ooh. are you doing here? Uh. uh- 
you know, I'm going to ride with Nebraska Northwestern. They treated me well hitting me. I uh, hit them on. Uh, I, I, Jesus. Can I fucking talk? Uh, yeah, no, I hit on them last week and, uh, but Northwest or Nebraska getting the week off, I think is key. I also think that, that they kind of got shafted in that Ohio state game. Cause all those players, all those targeting penalties, I, Ohio state still would have won that game. Don't get me wrong, but I do think that score was misleading. Yeah. I think it's hard to know what you got with Nebraska, but they, they definitely don't, uh, they definitely don't look like a team that I'm dying to bet on. Uh, I think at some point we've, we've started to wonder about the state of that program. I think we were buyers at some point and now I think they'd be good this year. It feels a little stale. And then meanwhile, look, results matter in COVID times and this North, like first thing we have to probably take away is that Maryland's really bad. Uh, I think that's yes. like starting to be, I'm not Maryland. I'm sorry, Minnesota. Well, like, like they're not, they're, as I said, they're rowing a boat without oars on defense, <laughs> but this Northwestern team is playing good football. They're playing efficient football and uh, I'm bringing trends today in Nebraska two and eight against the spread in the last 10. So, uh, which by the way, did you know this is being played at Ryan field? Thought hmm. you guys would like to know. Oh that. man. It's a year of the Ryan. Uh, that's what, that's what I <laughs> So do. you're going Northwestern Ryan. I am going Northwestern. I, I, I completely appreciate the value of buying a team that has only gotten their ass kicked by Ohio state and got a week off. Sean, sell me on Nebraska. Cause I'm, I'm I am, leaning I am. look, this is all I need to do to sell you. Uh, Don't Northwestern <laughs> didn't want to play football. Nebraska was trying to play football. Oh, they right. tried to play last Fucking week nerds. and the big 10 blocked them from playing Chattanooga. Yeah. That they were trying to pick up a game that communist Kevin Warren First, uh, trying to disparage our our inside reporter Sir Yad, who was all over this Big Ten stuff from the get go. This feels like an ugly game that no one wants to watch. Nebraska <laughs> will get the cover with three and a half points. Feels like an ugly field goal game. There will be a missed extra point in this game, and and I think that will be the difference. Speaking of uh, Middle Tennessee, what? <laughs> Well, we, we, you mentioned ta- Tennessee, right? Chattanooga. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. of, and, uh, speaking of Tennessee, in particular, <laughs> Middle Tennessee, they're a home dog, catching four and a half against Charlotte, kicking off on Saturday, twelve thirty West Coast time. Middle Tennessee plus one forty on the money line. The CLT is coming to town, Colby. I know you've been riding the Charlotte team. Are you going to keep riding him? Yes. Can, can I? Can yes. I? Can yes. I just say something before yeah. you start? The Clits are leaving Durham. A little banged up. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll let you go now. Cutcliffe has one a of those guys who will get <laughs> those private. You gotta watch out yeah. for those private school pussies <laughs> around the clits. <laughs> Cutcliffe has a great record against the the, the group of five man. Yeah. I should, uh, but I think Will Healy's gonna get Charlotte back on track. You love Charlotte, dude. I, I think I've been like, why are we picking? I think I'm like team, four, three or four and one ATS with them. So. I think they're much better than four they're, and a half. They're points. three and two against the spread, according to Odds Shark. But yeah. you're you're riding with the the Charlotte Forty ers road chalk, Colby. I am. I am. Yeah. Murfreesboro been there. I mean, what they can have like ten percent fans, but they won't even have ten percent <laughs> at a normal game. Kramer, what are you COVID. doing here? It looks well, like eighty-seven percent of the money, according to Odds Shark, is on the Charlotte Forty ers Give me right Middle now. Tennessee. I, I I've spent a couple fun weekends playing rugby, getting fucked up. Out there, a true hillbilly campus, uh, one, <laughs> one of the finest. And uh, the, the, I, what I would point, what I would point out to you guys is, that they might have gotten their ass beat a little bit early in the season, but they've bounced back. This is a competitive team, and I, I, it looks like we're just n- going to agree to disagree this week because you can't get your ass beat by a back Duke t- Duke team like that, and then expect that you're going to come back on back to back road spot. W- what is it you I like did. about the back to back? Not in this season. Not in this season. I don't keep saying that. And I keep hitting year. these back to back road spots. So give me the home dog. Yeah, and I, I think Ryan nailed a good angle there with the back to back road spots. In particular, Charlotte has just struggled on the road overall. Three and seventeen straight up in their last twenty games on the road. Give me Middle Tennessee State here. That was before they were the CLTs though, buddy. Well, CLTs, BLTs. It's all <laughs> it's all tasty to me. Fresno State, eleven point road favorite. Against UNLV in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. UNLV a plus three forty home dog. Fresno State minus four forty. The Bulldogs a a feisty team here. Did they play this in a dome, Colby? Uh, how did uh, they? It's at the Death Star. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Uh, so they're all right. Yeah, and no fans there. Because yeah. I was gonna say middle of the day in Vegas, even in November, could be hot as shit. 
So UNLV plus three forty. Do they have a chance here in this? No, I mean I'm two and zero oh on my locks over at the College Experience, fading UNLV, and I think Fresno is actually they they look good against Colorado State. They actually probably would have beat Hawaii if they didn't turn the ball over five times. And I I was I didn't like this hire by UNLV with Marcus Arroyo. To his credit, he didn't have spring ball. Um, so I, I think UNLV is kind of a mess right now. Give me Fresno big. UNLV is a trash team, and I was even going to entertain the idea of putting them in the fit, just like you said, fade every week. At least put them on alert. Sean, the temperature on Saturday, it's gonna be partly cloudy and a high of 60. So weather should not be an issue. I really like Fresno coming down here and just smash and not really sure why this line shortened up since it opened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I what I'm guessing is happening is the local diehard UNLV people are are betting Fre- UNLV. Fresno local. is also coming off longer rest. Yeah. yeah. Fresno coming off longer rest and just a, a much better team playing in the dome. So any sort of heat or elements that they may get a benefit from and and they're Fresno kids. If you're from Fresno, you, yeah. you, you're a seasoned partier. You're, you're not going to be tempted. I mean, you'll have fun in Vegas, but if you're in Se- Fresno, <laughs> you're no rookie when it comes to getting fucked up. So I think they'll be able to handle it. Percent of the bets are on you. Oh, right love it. Ooh, love public it. dogs. Yeah. They got fleas Western Kentucky. Plus seven at Florida Atlantic and Boca Raton, Florida, three o'clock West Coast kick. Florida Atlantic minus one seventy five on the money line. Western Kentucky plus one forty coming the other way. Colby, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm on Florida Atlantic minus the points. Uh, Jim Levitt, a big fan of Jim Levitt. He's the coach of the. He's the defensive coordinator of Florida Atlantic, and and Western Kentucky has been a mess offensively this season. I expect Levitt to dial up some so, some plays and pr- probably get a pick six or something here, but I, I I got the Owls rolling big. They couldn't even cover against BYU in a clear letdown spot. Uh, even when BYU, fa- well, I'll get to this later, but they failed to do much in the second half offensively. Uh, Western Kentucky's trash. I can't. I, <laughs> they they needed a field goal late to beat Chattanooga, an FCS team, two weeks ago. I I don't. There's no reason to to get cute and try to bet Western Kentucky here, but I will caution people. The reason this number opened, I think, north of ten even, and has come down, is because guess what, Sean? Bets coming in, sixty five percent of them on Western Kentucky. Ooh, another another public dog. They got opened fleas. at eleven and a half. Has come all the way down to seven. So that's wow, a lot of money. That's crazy. I, Florida Atlantic's a solid team, especially at home. That's a lot of movement of the line. Yeah, I, almost I, like there's some information we don't know. I don't know. Unless there's some, some crazy injury COVID. news we're not well, aware of. Yeah. Why are we enter? Why are we doing that and not just p- staking stone cold locks like whoever less miles? But, but y- 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 <laughs> I mean, this is a solid option for the COVID game because it is in Florida. Yes. We saw FIU get a game canceled last week. Just, just throwing that out. There, yeah, man. we were one week off on uh, picking the COVID <laughs> oh, no, game, you, which man. is really, really put our hex on it. Yeah, I just I, I, I up scroll up and down. And I don't see Oklahoma, Kansas on the sheet either. I, again, just this. <laughs> oh, you got K State. They had a lot. Co- they a, had a lot. A clear yeah. swing and a miss. <laughs> oh yeah, Thrive Fantasy, man, love me some Thrive Fantasy. It's a daily fantasy sports app built for player props. You know, with Thrive, you can eliminate the uh, all the hours of research you need to do. Figuring out, I, I don't know. You can get in too deep when it comes to some of these DFS uh, apps. I know that. I know that all too well. Thrive, they keep it simple, man. They give you for the NFL, they give you twenty player props. You pick your ten favorites, and it's just player props over under. They do a, a Thursday night one for the NFL. They do a uh, you know Sunday one for the NFL. They're going to be doing uh, one for the Masters, PGA, a little bit of everything. They've given out over one point six million dollars in prizes. That's right, one point six million. Jesus Christ! ThriveFantasy.com, and if you use the promo code SGP, sign up there. You receive an instant match up to fifty bucks on your first deposit. ThriveFantasy.com, sign up and prop up today, and don't forget to use that promo code SGP. Joining us on the line, stand-up comedian and huge Notre Dame fan, Dano Carter. Dano, wanted to talk to you, get you on the line, talk to you about this huge game, Notre Dame at home right now. My bookie has the game, Notre Dame plus six, a six-point home dog, plus one eighty on the money line. Clemson coming in, of course. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is out. First off, let's get this going right. It, can you answer the allegations that you were the one who infected Trevor Lawrence with COVID nineteen? <laughs> true or false? 
<laughs> oh, I had it in February, so oh, that would have wow. been a Ahead really long. That would have been a long con. Uh, <laughs> But if I somehow pulled that off, that'd be impressive. Uh, no, I, I think I had it in February. I actually know that for sure. But uh, so I will, I will plead the fifth on that. <laughs> so now Notre Dame. Before we started recording, Colby pointing out that it's it's actually going to be kind of unseasonably warm there in in South Bend, Indiana. You know, you were probably hoping for some cold weather. Get those, get these uh, Southern boys up here and freeze them out. What do you? What's your take so far on the, on just the game conditions overall? How do you see Notre Dame's chances going into this? Well, the biggest bummer is that it's not a real home field advantage for us. Like we, there weren't even night games when I was there. Okay. We didn't even have them, but we're really good at home at night. And so it it just gets way rowdier, Uh, but the weather, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone says. But then when it was really shitty weather, we'd use that as an excuse of why we lost. So, <laughs> so already either way, already setting up the excuses. I mean, let's be honest though, as a, as a Notre Dame fan, you had to be a little excited that you, you weren't facing Trevor Lawrence, but are you, are you kind of worried? Cause Clemson clearly looking ahead last week, or do you think they're just that bad now without Trevor Lawrence? What's your take? Were they looking ahead to this game in South bend or are they really just that shitty without Trevor Lawrence? Well, if you watch the Clemson BC game, it wasn't really their backup quarterback's fault at all when they were down. I mean, they had a they had a goal line fumble, fourteen point swing, right there. So that that really affected most of the first half, I think. And that guy played really well. Like he's not as good as Trevor Lawrence at all. But no, I think their their defense looked vulnerable, if anything. But unfortunately, it was with our old quarterback who transferred to BC who now looks amazing. I was just about <laughs> to ask about that, man. I was just uh, Jerkovich or, or, you know, whatever they pronounce his name as, but he looks really good. Are you, are you a little disappointed when, by watching his Absolutely. performance? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So I was texting Colby about it during the game. Yeah, uh, man. Uh, it, I, mean, I think he looks great. I think, you know, I don't, I don't think Ian book could go into Boston College and make them that good of a team like that. So, <laughs> yeah. which is by the way, he, stretch he was the guy that, but, during the Virginia Tech game, was getting the comps to Big Ben and and pointed out, like in the in the story, they said, eh, but he pointed out that he wasn't that fat. So it's like, oh man, this I, I kind of like this guy. Kind of like this guy. BC still trash team. Though, but so. by the way, back to the game. Though, I'm just well, ex- still, so book still has is jerk. Jerkovich has three losses now at BC. Book has three on his career. Yeah. So you can yeah. look at it that way too. He's but hold, a winner. On, hold on, hold on. Back to the game though, dude. We have Notre Dame is actually a part of the ACC this year. Hmm. Good, right? good of them to step Clemson's up. Clemson's actually going to get tested in their own conference. Well, they have the Hokies later this season. Oh, so don't oh. Worry. Don't worry. <laughs> but yes, well, yes, they are being tested. Uh, dude, Finally, this is great. You know what this is? This is genius work. Cue the conspiracy theory music, Sean, please. Because now what the ACC can do <laughs> when Notre Dame beats Clemson's ass, they can pull the card of Trevor Lawrence wasn't there. Oh. This isn't the same team. And now the ACC has two teams in the college football playoff. Fucking genius. So you're on Notre Dame and the with the points then. Right? Oh, absolutely. Me, me too. Boston man. College is horrible. Virginia Tech rolled up 40 points on them with no one. They were playing practice squad. Like that was the game where the practice, the real practice, like the Sean Green played safety, got an interception, and the entire bench cleared the <laughs> to celebrate with him. Hey, why, they, why am I getting trapped? They on rolled this? up forty points on that team, so I'm absolutely on Notre Dame. Notre Dame ha- ha- has a serious advantage in some areas here, and sure, the Clemson quarterback was great last week when he needed to be, but they still needed a prayer to beat Boston College, and Notre Dame is just a slight. Tick up. I, I'm on Notre Dame as well. Kyron Williams, freshman running back, guy's a stud. I think they they catch Clemson in a good spot, and like I said, Clemson doesn't get tested much in the a- ACC. Sorry, Kramer, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> give, give me the Irish and the points. And and Dano, do do they ever watch Rudy pre get big big game? I guess Notre Dame's not a dog too often. I, I assume they but. do for every game. Yeah. <laughs> right? uh, yeah, it's it's on in the dorms every <laughs> single Saturday morning, like immediately. Uh, everyone's yeah, everyone's watching it. Yeah, you got you got to you got to watch uh, Rudy if you're if you're getting ready for a big Notre well, Dame game. I do have a fun Notre Dame anecdote. I, when I was driving one of my trips cross country, I was like, I've never seen the campus of Notre Dame. I want to see the campus of Notre Dame. Uh, 
And, and so I stayed at the La Quinta Inn right next, D- right in South friendly. Bend. Dog, right, dog friendly, dog friendly hotel. <laughs> That was a. We did have a dog with us, and uh, I then I, I then uh, took a tour in a U-Haul truck of the of the campus, or or what I could see. It was like very like it turned out you can't just drive on the campus and cruise around, but uh, yeah, the La Quinta Inn, very beautiful, Colby. I thought you would like it, dog friend. Some, that's some good local knowledge and breaking down this game. All right, I'll, I'll make it. A- <laughs> well, I'd say if you ever got to go to a game and and you're bringing your dog, now we know. Uh, are we are we going to see some line movement after Ryan pointed out that they have a La Quinta? <laughs> And That's you can drive friendly. around and see some of the campus. <laughs> well, they they're not allowing fans, so probably not right now. But if a normal season, I think well, that would drive it up a little bit. Hopefully, yeah. the La Quinta is still in business. Uh, I'm going to make it. So you're a, getting that. You're getting it at six points. I saw it seven and a half. Yeah. Well, I, so I think it opened at seven and a half, but right now over at my bookie, it's down to it's down to six. Uh, and even I don't like I don't like when people are taking us too much. Yeah. <laughs> that, even that even some places sometimes. getting down to five and a half. Uh, I, I think Notre Dame kind of a public team here, but to me, Clemson's defense is just so bad that uh, I think they're going to at least make this a game. I'd be shocked if Clemson comes in and wins by two scores. Like they, they just don't match up that well with them. Well, and this Notre Dame team is, is, you know, traditionally they were like a pass heavy team with Brian Kelly. This is like a run heavy, nasty defense, nasty O line type of team. So I've been really impressed with them that so far this year, despite I know they haven't played some of the best ACC teams, but it is what it is in the ACC. It's no, our our opponent's record. Okay, so this speaks to the whole conference versus independent thing. Our schedule was way tougher before than the season <laughs> when we're actually in a conference. Well, I'm thinking it, to, I'm thinking because we had Wisconsin on there. We had you know USC. There, those teams are better than every team we've played so far. Uh, agreed, but I think the ACC threw you a bone with COVID. I'm thinking, hey, let's give you a bunch of uh, Georgia Techs and Wake Forest, and uh, you know, uh, it, well, they gave us UNC and they gave us BC was the ones they added. Yeah, those I mean, are already on the schedule. UNC is supposed to be; they're, they're still pretty good. I yeah, think. Yeah, I mean they and beat BC. Virginia that's going to be a tough game because BC we have the week after Clemson, oh, and they have a history of Glenn doing Foley. That to us. Glenn they, Foley. They yeah, like to show right. up to to stick look, it to Notre look, Dame. If you're a white dude playing tight end or middle linebacker <laughs> in New Jersey at like Bergen Catholic, your first school is Notre Dame, your second school is Boston College. Signed, sealed, delivered. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 relatively shocking, even with everything that's been said that that Notre Dame is is still be, like they're not the public team, Sean. They're not really? they're not the they're not getting the money. Uh, it it yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, I'm looking at the money right now. Bri- it's a Brian, pretty even. Brian 50, Kelly's 50 the reason slip. I guess you bet against Notre Dame, but he's you know he's better than I would like to believe. So Dano, what uh, how does Notre Dame not cover this spread? What is what is really the worst ju- case scenario? <laughs> <laughs> there, I could think of a million worst case scenarios. It'll keep me up all week. You know, there's there's something going on tomorrow. I heard, but you know, I, mm. I'm mostly focused on Saturday. Um, oh yeah, some sort <laughs> of political thing. Um, but right. but what do you? What are kind of the keys to a Notre Dame cover okay, yeah, and or th- victory? Okay, uh, I could easily. Well, you know, we are, we've been muffing like punts and like dropping punts again. You know, we did that against Florida State twice and weird things like that. We'll never cover. Uh, if we make any mistakes, I don't think we'll cover uh, really, but it's really going to be about the running game. And if we can get going, cause that book just doesn't have the one receiver we've had. Like we had Will Fuller, then we had miles Boykin then we had chase Claypool feed any of those guys on our team. I think we'd be way better off this year, but we're missing that stud. So I really think the running game has to, has to play. If we, if we don't get, let's say, I don't know, 150 to 60 rushing yards. I don't think we win. Well, and you mentioned uh, all time uh, Notre Dame receivers. Got to throw in their uh, Golden Tate. Uh, huge <laughs> fan. Of Ooh, he had a great Tate. catch tonight. How about that catch? <laughs> I do like me some Golden Tate. Sure. Scrappy Jersey <laughs> legend. So Dano, can we Please. give you a uh, let? Let's lock it in. What is your what is your score prediction for this big game Saturday? <laughs> and actually, before you give us your prediction. What is uh you know what is your what is your day like on Saturday? Walk <laughs> us through how much are you planning on oh. drinking. What are your rituals? Where are you going to be watching the game? Oh, that's okay. This is great because uh, I've been. It's really tough this year because of COVID. So the Notre Dame Club of Los Angeles has said that they won't sponsor any game watches like they usually do because uh, of COVID. Even though there are all these outdoor bars down here at the beach, <laughs> so we've doing these rogue. These rogue game watches, basically going rogue. Kind of, yeah, 
so it, it feels like I'm at Notre Dame again, and there's these strict rules that I have to play by. <laughs> like I have to kick my girlfriend out of my house by 2 a.m. <laughs> Father, <laughs> Father O'Leary's so, going to come by for a room check. We had, yeah, Father Doyle was my was my priest. <laughs> <laughs> but so my friend Nick is uh, manned up, and he's going to host the game watch because we can't really find it a proper place for it. It's been, it's been pretty rough. Um, funny spot. Everyone's, so everyone's going through uh, tough times in COVID. So, yeah. And everybody <laughs> who's listening to this podcast, you're invited. <laughs> if you're an Irish fan to Nick's house in Manhattan beach, it's on ninth street. I'm not going to tell you where, but if you walk, Just walk up and up down, and down the and they... street, you'll be able to tell who's having the Notre Dame game. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Final score, Dana. Uh, 50 is nothing. All right. Oh, I like give us, that. give us okay, a real okay, realistic, realistically, let's say 31, 21. Ooh, Irish. okay. 10 point, 10 point win and cover for the Notre Dame fighting Irish. So we're all four on, on Notre Dame. Yeah. What could go wrong? Yeah. Lock it in. No, this is terrible. What are you? <laughs> come on. Who's the guy? I don't know. <laughs> all right. I'm right. Right. Fuck it. You private school right. pussies. Give me Clemson. Right. Let's go. Cool like that. Let's go. There you go. All right. So you got one to center Clemson minus All right. six. All right, Dano. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling in. Best uh, of no luck. Uh, guys. Best of luck to Notre Dame. All right. Take care, brother. Best of luck with the rest of this podcast. Later, Bye-bye. dude. Later. Always fun. Uh, talking to our boy, Dano Carter. It's going to be going nuts down the South Bay. Oh man. And now so, is someone's going to show up on, <laughs> I think we do have a couple South Bay listeners. I feel like a couple guys have hit us up before. So I might fucking go to that. Even though I'm not a, <laughs> like a huge Notre Dame fan, I'm not for them, you know, you know what else sounds fun running and owning your own sports book. And you can do that over at aspread.com slash SGP. That's aspread.com slash SGP. Sign up there and get up to six weeks free. That's right. Six weeks of their amazing sports book betting software. Again, turnkey operation, sign up there. You get a website going. They come up with all the lines. They grade all the lines. They handle all that stuff. You just take care of the customers, the clients. And again, you probably know some fellow degenerates. Why, why are you letting them give their money to some random dude, uh, you know, behind a McDonald's, you should be the one owning and operating the sports book. Acebread.com slash SGP acebread.com slash SGP. Sean, just to be clear, that's he's paying for something else behind me. Oh, no, no, he's <laughs> paying for sports bets. I don't know where your mind went, right? Yeah. Oh, I, hand jobs. But, you know, <laughs> same thing. Same difference. Either way, you're getting fucked. BYU. Speaking of hand jobs. Oh, I was about to say that. <laughs> they're ready. They're ready to go in a soak here. Hand jobs only. BYU, three point road favorite in Boise, Boise State. Coming off a nice win against uh, the, the Air Force Falcons. Boise State, though, a three point home dog. This is some Friday night action. Plus 130 on the money line. BYU, of course, everyone's in love with their quarterback, including Ryan. Colby, that's, what are you uh, doing? That's here? what I'm making reference, just to be clear. The TV broadcast, uh, the play by play guy said, Whoa, that's an <laughs> underhand job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in but, in right? response, no, in that? response to the BYU quarterback. <laughs> Oh, uh, acting like Patrick Mahomes in that game against Zach Houston, Wilson, yeah, where they couldn't yeah. help but get all of his dick in their throats. <laughs> anyway, I apologize, Colby. Uh, you were saying, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how. I don't think fans are allowed. I'm not sure though. Uh, but this is the Smurf turf. Yep. And Boise is really, really good on the Smurf turf. Yep. I think they're in a classic spot. Getting points, Boise on the Smurf turf. Have they ever been a? Uh, I mean, not since like 2004. I feel like they've been a a dog on their own turf. So give me, give me the Broncos. A little bit too much hype here on BYU, Colby. I think you're onto something. There is snow in the forecast. Oh, beautiful. It's crazy though, too. Like BYU is seven and zero. Boise State two and zero. Like they've almost they played like half a season more than Boise <laughs> State. And if you is that does that help them or hurt them? You think? I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I think. I think this is a clear step up in class for BYU. And I, I think the only other time uh, is he, what Houston, they won by a lot, but if you watch that game, it was a bit stretched out. Yeah. So with this step up in class, which a, t- with a tough spot here, you look at what BYU did in the second half against that Western Kentucky team. 
sure the game was a little bit out of hand, but they they didn't look great. I think they scored a total of six points in the second half. I love Boise here. I think this is this is just a great spot. I we we discussed playing the look ahead last week with the intent to then come and play Boise. Didn't expect them to be a three point home dog. Yeah, me neither. Uh yeah, I mean, I just think that's this game was scheduled really late in the year. Like, I mean, this happened like they scheduled this like I feel like a month ago. Yeah, because everyone was scrambling and BYU needed to to, to make their schedule tougher if they could, if they go undefeated. But I think by doing that, I mean Boise's better than Houston, and I and on the Smurf turf, I'm not I'm not ever fading. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to just watch and I watch the entire uh, offense is off entire Air Force position. Boise State game. Shout out to Ryan's Hulu uh, log in there. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Boise State six and zero against the spread in their last six games at home. But I saw a physicality out of this Boise yeah. State team and the fact that they didn't look past. Uh, Air Force, like I kind of thought they would to this uh, Boise, or, you know, to this BYU game. I, I think that shows that they're pretty well coached. And that God damn it, when, when that backup yeah. quarterback, you know, was the starter there, that was like a late scratch, right? Yeah. A- yeah. And when he came in, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like Air Force getting the points and a backup well, quarterback. First play of the 75 game. yard touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> that dude, and maybe that was just a free game, but that guy was throwing the ball well, really well. Dude, he's USC a USC tra- grad yeah, yeah. transfer. Yeah. So, so he's definitely he, uh he comes uh, with pedigree. And uh, just to close it off, BYU getting almost 80% of the tickets. So. Okay. Yeah. Then I love it. So yeah, give me give me Boise State as well. Let's go, baby. Michigan, three point road favorite, coming off a stunning loss, but it's not stunning if you know Harbaugh. Uh, <laughs> fucking lose. Three Especially point road favorite. Michigan State. I, I mean, yeah. three and eight <laughs> against Michigan State and Ohio State. Like I understand, Still you losers. can't be owned by both of your rivals. <laughs> you only choose one. <laughs> Michigan minus three, a road favorite at Indiana. Only laying three in Indiana. Indiana three point home dog. I know it's always fun to pick against Harbaugh, but don't don't they kind of respond to this? Or was that a dream cusher uh, game? No. I mean, the thing is, we they have a, lose that game every year. <laughs> you're right. We probably have a lot of data points that we can look at how they've handled coming off a Michigan State loss. <laughs> That's true. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Michigan here. I mean, they're you know, uh, dude, they're it, just they're I, ten I, and zero straight up in their last ten games against Indiana. I, they I, just fucking own. Them. I have a trivia question. You sure. kind of gave Colby a hint, but when was the last time Indiana beat Michigan? Ah oh, man, it's got to be in the. I'm saying 70s or 80s. 1987. Okay. They've lost 24 straight. Oh my god. Uh, Indiana oh is ranked, god. so they're not coming in with any sort of shock value. The, the days of Anthony Thompson. Uh, if anything, I could argue Indiana may be a little overrated. Penn State sleepwalking into that. Penn, that but there is that angle though that this. I mean, they hadn't beaten Penn State since the 80s, and they, they accomplished. If they win this that, game, they're going to finish second place in the East. That's a surprising spot. Now they face a Michigan team off a loss to. A rival, either they come in flat as fuck and they just don't care. More likely, I think Michigan rolls again. They've won. 20, I agree. They've won twenty four yeah. straight. I do. I caution for that. That as Sean puts, the dream crusher angle where they just come out flat in this spot because they beat them every time. But yeah, I, I three. That's a very short number. Yeah. Well, and 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 watching that game, clearly it was Michigan State just taking advantage of the. Of the Michigan cornerbacks and especially on the outside, drawing a ton of PIs, a ton of uh, a deep balls with uh, what was his name, Lombardo, whatever they're uh, Rocky Lombardi related Lombardi. to Vince Lombardi. Oh yeah, I mean, why were uh, you know <laughs> how the hell did we not pick that guy in the money line? <laughs> his name, name is, Rocky. is Rocky. His last name is Lombardi. <laughs> He's a twenty-six point home dog, and we didn't fucking pick him. <laughs> Colby, I blame you. You're you got to be on top of this, dude. I bet that game. I took Michigan no, State. I know. Yeah. So did I, but yeah. I didn't bet at money line. <laughs> Pussies. Colby, are you on Michigan minus three here? I am. I am. Oh, yeah. No. This is not a good <laughs> sign. What could go wrong? Sp- uh, moving along here in the SEC, Florida, three point, uh, three and a half point dog in Georgia. Of course, Kentucky covered a last week against Georgia. Didn't get the outright win. Georgia only put up what fourteen points, fourteen to three. <laughs> Georgia now laying three and a half at home. No, it's in oh, no, this is a yeah. neutral game. It's the world's, world's biggest cocktail party. World's right? largest virtual cocktail. Party. <laughs> yeah. I think this. No, it's Florida, dude. World's largest COVID party this year. Yeah, they're gonna right? be. They're gonna be spreading <laughs> it. This would be one of the. Yeah, I mean, look, Georgia, t- tough go last week. We got lucky to cover with Kentucky. Uh, for those of us who were on Kentucky, because 
Georgia should have rolled this one up. And the box. This is one of those deceptive box scores. Uh, immediately circle Georgia as a team. I want to hop on the following week. Uh, dude. Well, you're not alone, Ryan. Right now, according to Odds Shark, seventy five percent of the money on Georgia three at minus three and a half. Are you scared that the public is backing the Bulldogs in this neutral field spot? No, because they know just like I know that my my good personal friend and and everyone in the Georgia family, uh, Richard LeConte. Uh, he got a he, a dirt bike. Got fucked right? up yeah. on a motorcycle. He's out of the ICU. They are gonna fucking go out there and win this game. One of the best safeties. One of the best safeties. The country. Player yeah. SEC Player of the Week last week. Uh, this Dr- will dropped ma- a pick six with like f- two minutes left. This will <laughs> matter, Sean. Motivation matters in these types of spots, especially in this game, because the winner will go on to win the SEC East. I think that's the emotional boost they need, and and. I think Kyle will be coming out of this one. Kyle Trask, more like Kyle Trash. Mm. Ooh, ooh. Wow. You guys taking the chomp chomp gators. Dude, I mean, all off season I was taking I was saying, dude, Smart's got an incredible record against Mullen. It goes back to his Defense Mississippi State good. teams. But dude, Stetson Bennett is yep. really, really bad. I think he's one of the like I, I said on the college. He's a fucking nerd. I think he's there's a hundred better starting it's, quarterbacks. It's a D it's a play on the I think what happens when Florida plays a team that can play defense? Yeah, to me though, I, you what look happens? At, look, look, but look at what Georgia—they couldn't stop the deep ball. They couldn't stop the passing game of Alabama and Mac Jones. I, I think Trask gets enough done, and the fact that you're getting that three and a half—if they're down ten, yeah. you can get that back door. I, I think Florida's going to be jacked up for this game, and I just I I can't back Bennett right now. I I like your motivation angle, Ryan, but I and I do think they were looking past Kentucky to this game. So I'm I'm not taking that much into it. I just think they're going to be able to pass the ball on them. So give me Florida plus well, three and a half. Especially like this season, maybe it's COVID. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way football is headed. But there's a lot of, especially in the SEC. You no, guys are crazy you need to be able to score now. Yeah. And I think finally, I think uh, Mullen will get off the Schneid against that, Smart. This Georgia defense is good. I, I'm I'm intrigued to see this matchup. I'm intrigued. Should be a good game. Oklahoma State. Squaring off against Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. OK State, a minus 12 and a half point favorite, minus 470 on the money line. K State, a plus 340 dog. What happened to Kansas State? Looked like they were uh, good and then just got their ass kicked uh, last week. Well, they, they had a they tough had a situation. Bunch, bunch of COVID also. They had yeah. a tough yeah. situation in West Virginia, and that's why I gave it out as my bonus lock, Sean. And now, what do they have? Well, they're coming home. Good place to, uh, good for them. And they are taking on an Oklahoma State team who just blew, absolutely blew a game against Texas. And this, my friends, this is the dream crusher. Now they are a big time road favorite against after a, after losing to Texas. Yeah. After and and they have a Kansas State team that plays well at home. Uh I I can't see an angle to taking the favor. I know Oklahoma State plays some fucking defense this year. Colby, tell me, are they missing enough players to really? Uh, enter? I, well, the, this is the worst part about college football. It's not like the NFL where you you get an injury <laughs> list. Yeah, I, you find I don't, out on Saturday. It's yeah, great. I it's like don't fucking know. Russian roulette. And, and you know, K State's been hit by COVID all year. I feel like. Yeah. And do, do they not get? Don't all of them have the antibodies by now? <laughs> like, don't you reach some point where you can't keep getting COVID? Um, so, I mean, that's something to track here, but I mean, okay. State got robbed against Texas. I was on Texas money line, uh, on an actual bet, but that roughing the, the punter was, they, they're going to come horrible. out flat. They'll come out flat in the spot. It's Manhattan. That's a, it's, it's a weird, it's a tough road game. Give me the points. Give me the points. I mean, I, yeah, I like the, I like the home dog spot coming off a loss for Kansas state. Who's not horrible. Okay. State going to be tough to get up for this game and cover the big number. Well, I think this could be a defensive battle too. I think both of these teams play better defense than offense. So yeah. uh, to take 12 and a half feels like taking candy from a baby. Pac 12 is back, baby. Arizona state catching 11 points in Los Angeles, California at USC USC minus four fifty on the money line. Sun devils plus three thirty going the other way. Colby, are you messing with the Devils right now? I am, and that dude, that's a nine a.m. kick. Where is though. this game being played? At the Coliseum. That can't be right. No, it's a, noon, it's a noon kick. Really? It, it is listed at nine a.m. No, I'll, get, I'll uh, give it. Well, to no, Kobe. that's what I heard. That oh, this year, east. I heard this year they're going to try to the, the Pac-12. To, to Larry Scott to the East Coast. Yes. Th- 
What a horrible yeah. commissioner. <laughs> this is good. Well, this changes my handicap because Herm Edwards is an old guy. Yeah, old guys his, like getting up early. His body clock is ready for this. He was built for an early game. I have a feeling if anyone is doing some dumb shit to get his team ready for a ridiculously early kick, it's not. It's still Clay Helton, right? Yeah, oh, I God. mean, uh, I'm uh, I'm on the Sun Devils, dude. I think you're laying too many points. Wow. Oh, give me Hermit. I love yeah. this angle now. I I thought that was a typo. No, dude. I know. Larry Scott made it known in the offseason that they're going to try to cater. Dude, imagine I was like, being. Well, <laughs> obviously there's no fans, but imagine trying to tailgate for a 9 a.m. game. Well, just imagine the the kids. They're going to be partying the night that, before. That that's makes tough... me like that's like waking up for NFL when it's in London. Like, <laughs> fuck, dude, that hurts my body a little bit. What are you doing? I don't like you're, on, you're on Arizona State plus yeah, eleven. Yeah, I mean, I like uh, you know they got Marvin Lewis as their DC now, um, but uh, Jaden Daniels, elite quarterback. Wait, yeah, we talked to it. Uh, Arizona State. Yeah, has Marvin Lewis too? Yeah. Another old guy. Yeah, <laughs> this is the geriatric <laughs> bunch. Ta- Nine a.m. kicks are ain't no thing. And Antonio Pierce, man. Jaden Daniels seems like oh, a guy. Well, timeout. I did no prep for this game. Clearly, Antonio <laughs> Pierce is on the coaching staff. Yes, yes, man. Play the lock sound effect. <laughs> you that man, that man had no business playing middle linebacker in the NFL for all those years, and he. Mm, mm. And uh, Slovis, the USC quarterback, thrown nine picks this season. I play I, to win the game. I think Jaden Daniels, he's a guy that can, uh, you know, put up some points, make some athletic plays. He's a tough guy to play when you haven't played a game yet. You know what I mean? Like your first game, you're playing a super athletic guy like Jaden Daniels, front of the program, Jake Plummer. I know he's oh, a big uh, Jaden Daniels damn. fan. We gotta rock Arizona State just for the Jake Plummer. You know, angle, and it's uh, funny because the program. I thought we were gonna be fading Herm Edwards. I think we tried to, and it just <laughs> didn't work out. So uh, my, our bad, Coach. Hey, another thing. To I factor understand in. you play to win the game, but play to cover as well, my friend. <laughs> another thing to factor in is you got what? Yeah, I, I was just recently in Arizona twice in the past two or three weeks, and th- it's like COVID never happened there. Where, oh, whereas LA, you know, I, I I know for sure these guys weren't weren't out. You know, the, LA was on fire, and then we also had the COVID thing. So I think you know Arizona State's got a little edge there. Lot still crazy. They're playing a nine a.m. game in fucking Coliseum. That's <laughs> Larry Scott at his finest. Next up. Your Virginia Tech Hokies, Ryan, laying 14 and a half in Blacksburg. This is also a 9 a.m. West Coast kick. Minus 14 and a half. Liberty, plus 400. Dog coming into Blacksburg. Do the Hokies roll here, Ryan. I'm going to read some, some, uh, some games off to you. Next week, hosting Miami. Following week Ooh. at Pittsburgh. Look ahead. Week off, Clemson, and then UVA. This is a horrible spot where they're actually taking on a ranked Liberty team who will be hyped, right? There is this the one hundred percent big brother little, little brother situation here. There's no way you're not taking this. Is the trust me if you get Justin Fuente is gonna find a way to fuck this game up. <laughs> He's gonna find a way to fuck this game up, and the fourteen and a half is just right because that defense. Has shown quarters at a time where they're just like, mm, we're not going to tackle right now. Uh, I'm all over Liberty. Give me Liberty or give me no. death because Malik Willis, Auburn transfer at quarterback, and you guys know who Liberty's head coach is. It's Hugh Freeze, strip club loving Hugh Freeze. Oh. You know, you know, there's some shady <laughs> shit going on there. It seems to <laughs> contradict some of the main uh, uh, values of that university. <laughs> so I wonder how he got past the interview process, but. Liberty is six and two against the spread last eight. I am a little nervous that uh, 62% of the money is on the Liberty flames at uh, 14 and a half, but they're six and oh man, four and two against the spread. I, I think they make this a game. The look ahead angles too hard to resist. Give me Liberty plus 14 and a half. Ryan, are you actually going to pick Liberty plus 14 and a half? Are you just making the, the informed case for the uh, listeners? I'm making the informed case for the listeners. But also, this is the game. I no, no. I'm gonna take the. I'm gonna take the points with Liberty. I, wow. I, there is a sure. Maybe the offense just goes all out and Herbert rushes for 250 yards and they just blow him out. I. It just. It's not what Fuente's done. Yeah. Like they're 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 already preparing for Miami next week because if you're not, even though that the rivalry has softened over the years, that's the that's the game that matters the most of late. So they'll be ready. 
They'll be wedded. And more importantly, Fuente has this real like he's got a hard on for beating Miami in a weird like it's a weird thing. So I guarantee they're looking ahead. Liberty's going to Liberty's going to be a live dog. Like this is a game where you're going to have to after this Monday night game if if then Virginia Tech follows it up with a, a let's try to lose this one. You you're going to have to come check on me, Sean. <laughs> Our gals at home are they playing in the uh, stub hub Carson? Yeah. yeah. The dignity health field park center uh, memorial. You know field. why they're doing that? Cause <laughs> yeah. Cause they, Cause they're, they're, they're building a new stadium down in San Diego. It's not ready yet. looks pretty badass. San Diego I state. How they can get a stadium. <laughs> yeah. But the chargers can't. Yeah. That's fucking great. nine point favorites. So not a true home game, but doesn't really seem to matter. I, I'm rocking with our gals against San Jose state. I mean, San Jose state has been tough over the years, but this offense is just a fucking juggernaut right now. I, I think they roll. Oh man, uh, look, it's a terrible thing when you fade our gals. But guys, I'm gonna do it. Wait, what? Wow, I'm Colby. gonna do it, man. What Nick kind of Savage, are you? Nick Starkle, former A and M quarterback, former Arkansas quarterback, brought life to San Jose no. State along with Brett Brennan, their their head coach. San Jose State's been playing good ball. I locked him up last week and won. Give me the nine points and the Spartans. So are we back to where you can't lay this many points with? I just see. I I actually think San Jose State's a live dog too. As much as San how are Diego they going to move good, ball? Starkle's good, bro. This San Diego State defense is something. It is good. I'm it is laying, good. Uh, until we get burned, I'm taking San Diego State. I I, I pro- you're you're crazy, bro. You don't you don't get off a horse midstream <laughs> or whatever the fuck you say. <laughs> <laughs> you don't change a horse midstream. <laughs> you don't change horses no, midstream, buddy. There you go. You don't get off a horse there you midstream. Go. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Time for our lock dog tease presented by mybookie.ag. And of course, the bonus lock. Ryan, kick things off. Who's your lock? Who's your dog? Well, Who's fuck Colby. Lock, Oklahoma minus 38. Wow. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> protocol. I don't care. I, I, th- come on, Les Miles is playing football. Dude, this we had to sweat that Iowa State one out, man. Never a doubt. I would. I. I'm not kidding you. I didn't have worries. Uh, my 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 dog. Uh, let Let's look up and down. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is it is it too cheap to just go Boise? You know, what? Arizona State plus three thirty. Let's Ooh, go. I like that. Herm and uh, Marvin and the boys and Antonio Pierce. Give me what are you for, doing tease for the tease. Let's bring San Diego State down to three. Okay. Let's bring Florida Atlantic down to one. Okay. And for the final leg of my tease, let's uh let's see here. Oklahoma State can't cover 18 and a half in, in Manhattan. I had I was trying to think more like Solid. Colby. Kansas State plus 18 and a half in your bonus lock, Ryan. Well, Marshall minus 44 and a half. Yes, please. I already locked that up with the uh, Oklahoma minus 38 all in <laughs> uh, Colby. What are you doing? Who's your lock this week? Uh, my lock is going to be Florida Atlantic. Ooh. Okay. Minus um, seven. Yeah. I just think, I just think, you know, Jim Levitt and that against that offense, that horrible offense uh, dog. I'm going to go. What, what's the most value here? Give me Give me San Jose State at two seven. Whoa! Yeah. Wow! Shots fired. I think they're a live dog, man. Um, and uh, for the tease, let's go with uh, let's go. Let's knock up. Uh, let's give me Georgia plus. N- I mean, not Georgia, Florida plus nine and a half. Mm. Yeah, I don't care about that ten. I don't think I don't think Georgia has enough offense to beat anybody in the country by ten. Well, I guess they just beat. Kentucky by eleven, but you know what I mean. Yeah, Kentucky. Though. Yeah, exactly. Um, give me uh, what? Sh- give me Charlotte plus two and a half, or is that two or one and a half? What is that? Uh, yeah, plus one and a half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then let's let's uh, knock Fresno down to uh, five. I feel like Colby's at the market negotiating <laughs> for fucking avocados. <laughs> Don't call, you you got to come back to your avocado costume, right? Yeah. Um, I'm on fire tonight. Just, just let it go. Yeah, dude, you're you're bringing it, man. Oh, hot, 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 hot. What's your bonus Suck lock? Energy hot, drink. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, bonus lock. Give me a SMU minus thirteen and a half at Temple. Ooh, Temple's quarterback Anthony Russo out. I just can't. I mean, the only thing that could really ruin that would be weather. So pay attention to the weather. But SMU minus thirteen and a half. All right, my so l- cute. 
so cute. I, My, didn't, I didn't hear UMass or Oklahoma. Well, in your no, you guys did it. I mean, look, I think Oklahoma would be my play, but someone else is covering it. Okay. okay. You know, double locks are okay. Wait, Sean, you, you're yeah. up for my lock. I got, I got room in this passenger seat, Sean. <laughs> I mean, I'm less. Don't discriminate. He no. pays everyone. I'll, I'll take uh, I'll go Florida plus three and a half. That, that feels like a lock to me for my dog. Do I get crazy? How crazy do I get? N- Nebraska, that's kind of a soft dog. I like, I do like Nebraska. Obviously, I like Florida. Notre, Notre Dame. Dame, do Notre Wonder Dame, you, huh? Take your bullshit Irish angle and take Notre, Notre Dame. Dame plus one eighty. Although I like Kansas State plus three forty too, but uh, mm. I'll say, uh, I Kansas State is fun. Yeah, that's you know what? Fuck one. it. I don't want to jinx one. it. I'm going Kansas State plus three forty. Don't, don't want to put my stink on the <laughs> Notre Dame there. All right, for the T's, uh, let's move Marshall down to thirty eight and a half. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. You don't need to. You don't need to mess with that. FAU <laughs> minus one. Um, you don't want to mess with free money. Boise State up to nine. Mm. I don't know what you guys weren't weren't doing, not getting that involved. And uh, Fresno State down to five. That's that's a pretty easy one. And for my bonus lock, well, Ryan, do I want to steal your bonus lock? I'm also on Marshall minus forty four and a half. You? Like at some point we talk about this in the NFL. Yeah, you show know what? I'm gonna stop getting cute. Give me Marshall minus forty four and a half. <laughs> and can Fuck I it. can I throw out another angle to have some fun? I have been pretty dialed in with the situational spots. I'll I'm not sure I'm going to have a position on West Virginia plus the touchdown or plus six and a half, whatever you can find. But if you want to have some fun, fade Texas and Oklahoma State coming over the off the overtime game. If you parlayed that plus three forty with Kansas State with the a plus two fifty at West Virginia. Wow. That that could be I mean, Sean, last week I gave you a Miami Denver uh parlay on let it ride money line parlay. I yep. took Sean's dog, I took my NFL dog. Uh I'm gonna give you a college version of that. So yeah, let's let's do that. Let's fade that Texas, Oklahoma State, uh both those teams. Well well what's our COVID pick though, man? Mm, okay. We haven't been good with this lately. Yeah. I'm going off the reservation. It's gotta here. be in the Big Ten, right? I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, that's a heavy big 10 struggle. I, I, right I'm going to go. I saw New Mexico's well, numbers were rising. Did you dive? Hold on. Did you dive into why the big, the big 10 really shit the bet on this? The 21 day fucking the uh, 21 yeah. day thing is bad, but they also unlike like I mean, Virginia tech's been playing games, missing like 25. Yeah. Guys. Every, the, what, the, Florida cancels a game with the seven bi- guys out. Well, yeah. conferences have set bare minimums for how many scholarship players you need to play. No, but still mm. they, they cancel because their playoff chances were out. Well, maybe that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. But the big 10, it, it was like 5%, if 5% of the roster is gone, they can't play. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what, maybe five, five, eight guys. Like if you have 130 guys in the roster, maybe well, no, that's what was great is if you follow the sport closely, they were adding walk-ons to, to make the number bigger. So the percentage goes up. Yeah. Okay. You know that's, what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're putting anyway, you're putting, I'll, I'll, you know what? Sean green's on Penn state. You don't know that he's on Penn state I'm for the COVID game. <laughs> I do have four years of eligibility. <laughs> oh yeah. Sean. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with a big 10 spot. Let's, you know, I'm going to go Michigan, Indiana Harbaugh is cursed. I'm going to take a, a gamble on new Mexico. I saw on the news that the COVID cases were, were climbing in New Mexico, New Mexico university is in Albuquerque. It's their biggest city. They're traveling to Hawaii. It's a far trip on an airplane. Mm. Maybe they cancel that game. Wait, they're going to Hawaii. <laughs> yes. They're letting them go to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. It feels like that, that game might not happen. You might be <laughs> onto something here. Uh, what other big? What's a big? What's the Big Ten like? So Wisconsin's already out. Who, you could say Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Wait, what was say, the team that had played? Oh, Illinois, was it Iowa, Illinois, or Illinois, Illinois. Who does Illinois and, have? And they had nine players out last week. Oh, and they play Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota basically probably wants to end the season at this point. <laughs> they'll fa- that's they'll my pick. Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota, Illinois. <laughs> Minnesota, Illinois is my pick. Minnesota, that's a good. That's a good Illinois. pick. Illinois. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Make sure you do a deep dive on the college football and soon to be college basketball betting slate by subscribing to the college experience. Colby Dant, Patty C, the place to be, locking it down. The subscribe link is in the description of this podcast you're listening to right now. Maction Wednesday. 
Maction Wednesday again. Throw us a five star rating and review. Been pulling names for Merch Monday. Just gave out another winner today, so uh, we got you covered there. Make sure, you, yeah, just send in a uh, send in a review, not just a rating review. Write a review, you know. Throw be funny. Say what you like. Say what you don't like. And uh, the best ones we'll be picking randomly uh, once each week to give out some extra free merch for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Don't fuck this up, Fuente Kramer. Let it ride.